So a lot of people are going to be surprised that they're not going to get the right answer to this basic math problem. And uh, that's because a lot of people think they understand basic math better than they actually do. But let's see how you do with this problem. And of course, the problem is this. Let me go ahead and read it. It's six times parentheses 20 minus 18 divided by two times three and parentheses. What is the answer? Again, the only rule here is no calculator. All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course, I wanna walk through exactly how to solve this problem without using a calculator. And I'm gonna highlight probably uh, the most common mistake that people are going to make when it comes to this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And I'm assuming uh, most of you out there have some basic math skills, but you might just be missing one or two of the components to do this problem correctly. But the first thing we need to consider is the following. Okay, you can see here I said, or I have written down what is first. So what am I referring to? Well, if we take a look at what's going on in this problem, we have different mathematical operations. Matter of fact, right here we have multiplication, then right here we have subtraction, then over here we have division, and over here we have um, multiplication again, and then we even have parentheses going on. So what do we do first? Because order is certainly going to make a difference in terms of the values we get by doing this problem, right? So maybe I could be like, well, maybe I'll do the subtraction first, then I'll do the multiplication first, then I'll do division last, or maybe I'll do division first, then multiplication, subtraction. So Again, we need to know the correct order here, or we're going to do the problem wrong. So this concept in math is called the order of operations, because these things right here are what we call mathematical operators. So what is the correct order of operations? Well, let me introduce you to a uh, acronym that most of you probably already know. It's called PEMDAS. And if you never heard of this, well, this is super important. And some of you may have learned this, but you may have uh, used a different acronym. But uh, this is an extremely important concept to you, uh, in all levels of math. Let me go ahead and tell you what this means real quick. So this, again, is an acronym. These letters stand for something. But effectively, it's a checklist that we're going to follow from left to right. So let's go ahead and, and uh, define what these letters stand for. So P stands for parentheses. Now, technically, it's what we call grouping symbols in math. So anything that's grouped together by parentheses or brackets like this or even squiggly brackets like that, we're going to do first. Okay, now obviously, we have some parentheses in our problem. And uh, this uh, uh, first component here, uh, grouping symbols, or P, if you have multiple parentheses in your problem, you always work from the inside out. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to look for, and obviously we have some parentheses. Now, E stands for powers. Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what are you talking about uh, powers? Why, do, why is it you know, not another P here? Well, that would be kind of confusing, right? So uh, E is what we call an exponent. So if we have something like 2 to the third power, this little number up here is referred to as the exponent part of the power. 2 is the base, the entire thing is a power. So 2 to the third power, again, the 3 is the exponent. So that's what that stands for. But you can just think of this as um, uh, powers. Okay, so we're kind of moving uh, from left to right, and we're going to do whatever we um, have in our problem. If we don't have powers, for example, we'll just skip that and we'll continue on. All right, so now I'm going to come to the most confused part of the order of operations, and it's this part right here. So I said that uh, we have a checklist moved from left to right, and that is correct. But a lot of uh, people confuse this, and I don't think it's uh, quite frankly taught uh, well enough in uh, textbooks and school. Well, it's not emphasized enough in my experience. But a lot of people say, okay, well, the next thing is multiplication, right? Uh, so that makes sense to me, but that is not true. 
Okay, you might be confused. Well, are we going to, are we going from left to right? We got to do multiplication, do all the multiplication, and then move on to all the division. A and S. This stands for addition and subtraction. That is logical. That you know is kind of uh, you know using common sense, but that's not the way this works. So let's go ahead and actually understand the proper way to interpret PEMDAS. So the next thing we're going to do is multiplication or division. This is a group. Whatever we see first from left to right. So if I see multiplication, then division first from left to right, this is the way I'm going to do it. If I see division and then multiplication from left to right, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. Again, this is uh, the, one of the most confused concepts. And if you got the wrong answer, it's likely you made the error right here. Okay. So again, you know, by just correcting this one little un misunderstanding about the order of operations, you'll be successful and you'll be getting happy faces on these proms as well. And then A and S stand for addition and subtraction, and it works the same way as multiplication and division. We're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so this is the first thing we really need to understand. There is another component to this prom to get the right answer, but I'll address that in a second. So let's go ahead and continue down here and let's take a look at our prom. Okay, so first things first, we're like, all right, well, let's scan through here. We're thinking about PEMDAS. Now, you don't have to write it out, but for those of you that are maybe um, are learning this stuff for the first time, or if you're like, well, you know, let me just kind of write this out, that's perfectly fine, so you can just think about this. So we're like, okay, well, is there any parentheses? Obviously, there is. So that means do everything inside parentheses first. Okay, so effectively, we're going to uh, basically get this down to one number, and then we'll think about multiplying by six once we're done. So we're just uh, concentrating our efforts inside of the parentheses. Now, we're going to go to our E. Is there any powers inside of here? No. Is there any multiplication or division? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, what comes first from left to right? Well, it's not multiplication, it is the division, okay? So we have to divide first. Now, of course, this is kind of a sneaky problem because if I multiply, you know, the numbers work out, you know, uh, pretty nicely for both, you know, um, steps here, right? But we got to do the correct step. So is it multiplication? No, it's whatever we see, again, from left to right, and that is division. So we're going to go ahead and take 18 and divide it by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. All right, so that is our first step. And uh, again, this is probably where most people uh, made their mistakes. So now uh, we're gonna continue on and co um, continue to work inside of the parentheses until we get this down to one number. So we have 20 minus nine times three. Now just looking at uh, PEMDAS here, or the order of operations, we have subtraction and multiplication. So it's pretty clear who the winner is going to be. We're going to have to do that multiplication uh, next. So let's go ahead and handle that right now. So we have 20 minus 9 times 3. We'll do multiplication because that trumps the subtraction. So 9 times 3 is going to be 27. All right, so we have 6 times 20 minus tw uh, 27. Now, uh, some of you might be... Uh, confused about this minus nine, you might be thinking about, oh, is this a negative nine? You could have uh, said, oh, this is plus a negative nine. That's perfectly fine. But I'm just going to go ahead and just do this uh, in this manner. We'll uh, talk about positive and negative numbers in just one second. But I want to highlight something here. When I'm doing the prom, you notice that I'm writing kind of one step at a time so I can see what's going on. This is the way you should be doing this prom as well. Again, without the aid of a calculator. Okay, so we're down to six times 20 minus 27 and parentheses. So what is this equal to? Well, if you said seven, that is incorrect. This is actually equal to a negative seven. So 20 minus 27 is the same thing as 20 plus a negative 27. And uh, right here is, uh, this is again, going to be this other concept that I was talking about where some people could have gotten this wrong is they don't understand positive and negative numbers well enough, okay? All right, so I'm not gonna get into this full like lesson on how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers, but I will kind of uh, explain why this answer is uh, negative seven. So 20 minus 27, so this is gonna be 20. You can think of this as the same thing as 20 plus a negative 27. So when you're subtracting numbers, uh, you could do something called plus negative in math. It makes things much easier. So in other words, let's say I have uh, six minus 
eight. All right, now, if you look at this problem real quick, you're like, oh, six minus, uh, six minus eight, that's two. No, that's not right. So what we want to do is change subtraction operators to addition, but the way we can do that uh, we can certainly turn this into an addition problem, but the negative sign, we have a negative sign here. Uh, the uh, 8 is actually negative, but it's kind of hard to see this way. So it's a good practice to change subtraction problems into plus negative situations. So 6 minus 8 is the same thing as 6 plus a negative 8. Right? That's the same problem as 6 minus 8. So now we could see you know, clearly that we're dealing with a positive number and a negative number. And the best way I kind of like to explain this is this concept of money. So negative money is like debt. It's like you owe someone. Positive money is like you have money. So let's suppose you have $6 in your pocket. You're very happy about that situation. But then your best friend comes up and says, hey, give me back that $8 I uh, you know, uh, lent you the other day. They're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So you'll give them your $6, and you still owe them $2. Okay, so when it comes to adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers, the concept of money is a really good model. Let's just take another uh, quick, another um, example real quick of that. So let's say you have uh, negative 3. I write this a little bit better here. Negative 3 plus negative 5. Now, from a financial standpoint, how can we interpret this? Well, this would be like $3 in debt. Like, oh, I owe this person $3, and I owe this person $5. So what is your total financial situation? Well, you're in debt, negative $8, right? So negative plus a negative is another negative. Okay, so don't confuse the rules for positive uh, negative numbers for adding and subtracting with multiplying and dividing. That's a completely different situation. But this stuff is not difficult to learn. Matter of fact, I'll give you a suggestion on how you can learn all of this. But let's finish up this problem. So 20 minus 27 is uh, negative 7. So now, finally, we're down to one last step, which is multiplication. So we have a positive number times a negative number that is going to be negative. So 6 times negative 7 is negative 42 which indeed is the correct answer. Now, if you're uh, kind of wondering like, well, is this guy right? Well, go ahead and put, uh, you know, plug this stuff all into a nice scientific calculator or any kind of calculator that you can kind of see it. If you are working with a basic scientific calculator like a TI-34, that's a great kind of starting calculator so you can practice the order of operations. You can plug in the, uh, the operators and see the problem pretty much as I kind of written it out. Uh, written written it out in this video, and you can um, obviously practice these concepts on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and see uh, the mistake that most people probably made to get this problem wrong. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can, but the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. And let's talk about where most people probably went wrong. Okay, so some people are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know I got to use the PEMDAS here uh, to figure this out. So they're like, all right, parentheses, I got parentheses, good. Uh, e, are there any powers? Nope, there's no powers. Uh, is there any multiplication? Yes, indeed, right here. Okay, so most people are going to go strictly from left to right. And again, a very common uh, mistake. So don't feel bad. You know, obviously this video is intended to clear this up. Now, if you didn't understand the positive negative numbers, that's the other aspect of uh, doing this problem right. But again, probably most people made this error right here. But let's go ahead and play this out. So if you did two times three, of course, that is going to be what? Well, you would have uh, put six, right? So we would have six times 20 minus 18 divided by six and parentheses. So uh, here, we're still inside parentheses, it's subtraction and division, so we can go 18 divided by 6, that would be our next step. And you see here, this problem, I designed it, uh, so, you know, uh, and by the way, math teachers are famous for doing this, they will design a problem 
where if you do the wrong step, it looks like you're doing it right. So how many times have you taken, and I want to go off on a little tangent here, how many times have you taken a test? Um, certainly this has happened to me, and I know it's happened to a ton of you out there as well. And you're like, boy, I feel so good about this. I saw my answers on this test. Let's suppose it's a multiple choice test, or you just feel great about the test, and then you get your test results back, and you're like, you got a 70%. And you're like, what happened? Well, what happened was that a lot of times, the uh, math problems are kind of kind of tricking you. They're enticing you to you know, make a very common mistake. So you got to be very careful. And obviously, um, you know, this type of problem, you know, is designed in that manner as well, because here I can go, oh, uh, 18 divided by six is, of course, three. So I'm like, all right, so six times 20 minus 18 divided by six is three. So now six times 20 minus three, 20 minus three is 17. So I'm not even dealing with positive negative numbers here. So this is great. So six times 17 is 102. Okay, so again, this is probably the most common uh, mistake that people made. But, you know, it's an easy mistake uh, to fix now that you understand PEMDAS. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and give you a couple quick suggestions on those of you that want to improve your basic math skills. So um, first of all, I have a great little mini uh, math course. It's called my Math Foundations course. It's a three-chapter course I cover. Uh, decimals, fractions, order of operations, positive and negative numbers. That's a great starter course for those of you that want to get back in math. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description below. Now, if you want to take it a step further and you're not a math student, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Uh, in there, I teach you basic math, but I also teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, some trigonometry, probability, and statistics. These are all self-paced courses as well. But if you happen to be a student, maybe you're an algebra student or pre-algebra student, whatever the case might be, you'll see uh, links to those courses in the description as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.